Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about multi-sim, which is multi-processing for Gem5. Uh, this should be rather quick, uh, because it's quite a new feature. It was still fully, fully, fully fleshed out, but this will give you a quick rundown of how to use it uh, if you wish to, and what it's all about. So the problem. Uh, I believe uh, we've already went over this to, a, to an extent. Uh, someone asked this earlier in the week. Uh, but Gem5, the simulator, is single-threaded. And I feel like every single time I talk about Gem5 in any capacity, someone always asks if, number one, is it multi-threaded? The answer is no. Number two, will it ever be multi-threaded? And I still kind of think the answer is probably no. Uh, the, it's baked very heavily into the core design, and I think it's really unlikely to be changed anytime, anytime soon. Therefore, we can't really make your simulations faster just because you have a million cores or more threads it's limited to the thread. And that's a little bit depressing because we're not really getting all the gains we, we're getting with all the new cores that are coming in out in the new machines. Uh, the insight here is really, I'd argue, it doesn't really matter that Gem5 is single-threaded because if you're using Gem5, you're probably running experiments. And if you're running experiments, you're probably running more than one. In fact, you're probably running quite a lot you know, to get the data that you need. That's kind of the nature of experimentation. And multiple instances of Gen5 can be run in parallel. So if not a singular Gen5 process utilizing multiple threads, why not multiple Gen5 processes, each single threaded? You're running to see how much incremental uh, increases in a cache size affect a simulation. Just run all these simulations in parallel. As long as you've got enough threads, you can speed up your, you can speed up your experimental process anyway. And this is handy for slightly more technical reasons. If you use processes instead of threads, you get like the memory consistency for free, and you don't have to worry about all this uh, stuff you have to worry about with threading. So it's slightly easier for us to handle as well. People already do this. They 100% have done this since the beginning of Gem5, except it's not really done in a structured way. So I'm going to go quickly to this example here. And this is an example of how not to run Gem5. Um, Multi-sim, the script. Nope, wrong one. So this here is how someone would typically run multi -pro multiple processes of Gem5 right now. They just write a bash script, and they just kind of run out all their Gem5, uh, Gem5 uh, commands here and use the little and and bash site in the end to make sure they all run in parallel and go. I've seen this script. I've seen variations of this script like a million times. This is just how people do it. It's not wrong. It's just incredibly unstructured. If things fail, it's kind of hard to know what goes wrong. Uh, hard to know. Yeah. Uh, people always forget to re rename their output directories. So they're very confused about what data existed where. And it's just kind of a nightmare. Uh, and you know, it's very easy to need to run maybe like dozens of uh, Gen 5 simulations, if not more. And extending a script like this indefinitely just becomes slightly hard to handle. So um, go briefly back to my slides. So um, write a script for run multiple Gen 5 instances. It requires you to actually write the script, which we don't really like. We can probably do this. We can probably do this for the user to a certain extent. Obviously, increases, increases the likelihood of errors. Requires the user to manage the output files. It's also non-standard, uh, hard to share with others. It's hard to be produced unless we actually have the same environment or the same shell scripting, whatever, that they had and run it there. And there's no built-in support now or the future to kind of uh, expand upon this. So what we'd really like to do is, uh, if one of your Gem5 processes fails, we'd like the user to be notified and then able to rerun immediately or inspect what's wrong, et cetera, gather more data about that process and figure out what's wrong and improve their experimentation. You can't do that if everyone's just writing their own little scripts that are slightly different in various ways and give that feedback. So the better way is multi-sim. It's a feature that allows gen users to run multiple Gen5 processes from a single Gen5 configuration script. So we, up until now, each configuration script is one confined simulation of Gen5. With multi-sim, you can specify different Gen5 simulations in a single script, point Gen5 towards that script, and we call that Gen5, the, the parent Gen5 process, reads that script, and spawns the child processes. We do this via the multi-processing Python module, which is quite good because it handles some of the logic for us. 
Uh, essentially, how this works is you would specify, you either, I mean, recommend you specify the number of threads you want to use to run Gem5, and it will manage the jobs coming in and amount of threads available, and go from there. So workers and threads model here. So if you say, hey, we only want two processes, and you've got 10 jobs, it'll load the first two into the thread and do that. And, keep, and when one of the processes is freed up, it'll load the next, it'll load up, spin up the next Gem5 simulation and put that to work and uh, until eventually all your jobs are done. Multisim has several advantages over simple writing a script to run multiple Gem5 processes. It's kind of the inverse of what I talked about, talked about before. We, the Gem5 devs, just handle this for you. We figured it out. We deliver it to you. It's there. You can use it. Just because someone else has written and tested, it's lower likelihood of errors. And Multisim will handle the output directories for you. Again, you don't have to really think so much about it. You don't have to go through and uh, manually name each one necessarily. We will give each one of these an out a bespoke output directory. And it's standardized. That means it's easier to share. What I mean is you can actually just pass your configuration script to someone else. You don't have to can pass a configuration script and a bash script and tell them how to set it up perfectly. This is all confined into a singular Gem, singular Gem 5 configuration script. And from there, it's easy to reproduce and allows for future, future support. So we, are, so we will be plugging into this API things like Gem5 orchestration frameworks, meaning that you can have a panel, let's say, uh, that uh, manages all your processes and see which ones have failed and which ones have finished and where the outputs are. Um, that's kind of in the future, but given this, it gives us a standardized way to kind of do this, something to build upon for this. So that's also good. Some caveats, I've kind of been telling you this every few min every minute or so since I started talking, but it's new, so we're still kind of working, working on it. I'd say it's pretty, i say it works now, but it just doesn't have maybe all the features you would want. But, you know, uh, like, you know, being able to fully inspect processes live and things like this. Uh, this is because it'll just out as of the latest release of Jam 5. Uh, how, however, this tutorial should give you a good idea of how to use it going forward. So let's go through an example. Um, uh, materials, O2 using Gem5, 11, multi-sim, O2 multi-sim, multi-processing via multi-sim, and finally, the multi-sim experiment.py. So, maybe I should have went over this before. Um, I'll, actually, I'll actually go over the uh, script, we, script, the uh, bad example a bit more first. So you see here that this is just passing these uh, cache values to this experimental script here. And all this is doing is setting, setting this at private L1 cache hierarchy values here, so the data cache and destruction cache sizes, and then running a pretty basic Gen 5 simulation. And this is what's passed in these values here. So 8, 8, 16, 8, 8, 16, and 16, 16 kilobytes is the four experiments we want to run. And in the multi-sim, uh, we have our configuration script here, and I've left some things blank. And what I'm going to do is show you how you take this script, which is very similar to this. It's actually just got some stuff commented out, otherwise very similar, and how we would make this into a multi-sim. First thing you note here, import gen 5 utils multi-sim as multi-sim. That's probably the big difference between these two scripts for now. OK, let's get started. As you see, the script is almost identical, apart from we don't have a run function at the bottom here, and we don't have these set via uh, arg pars yet. We've got to do something fun here. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, first thing that's good to do, this isn't actually nest, this is actually mandatory, but we, we, we recommend it, is you multisim.setNum processes. I'm going to say two. That's the maximum number of concurrent processes the multi-sim will run at once. So this is, yeah. And we recommend that, because if not, the module will default to use all available threads. Given the amount of uh, RAM that Gen5 typically needs for most simulations, this might push you to an out-of-memory situation. So we encourage you to think about how much each thread will probably use and set something sensible here. Two is probably pretty sensible for these uh, kind of smaller code spaces. At least I, ex I did experimented with this before, and it worked fine. Um, second one is really the best way to do this, run experiments, I think, is 
or to set up multi-sim experiments is to kind of just put everything in basically big for loops that eventually iterate through all the designs you want to do. So, I was, so we're kind of trying to do to change the values of the data cache and instruction cache for each of our simulations we want to create here. So I just do for data cache size in, and then just declare our two values here, 8kb eight, eight and 16kb. And for instruction cache size in and in, and I'm just going to do the same thing here. And then, really, I just want all my design here to be inside these for loops. So I'm just going to take all of this and uh, tab it twice in. What I was saying. And then, all I really want to do here, to here is do, this is going to be the data cache size. This is going to be the instruction cache size. And as we're almost there, we're almost, you can kind of see how this works. We're iterating through, and each, uh, each, each of the bodies here is setting up a different simulation with slightly different cache sizes. And the only thing we have to do down here that's different, if you remember at this point, you'd normally do simulator.run or create the simulator. What we want to do is do multisim.add simulator. And in here, I'm going to declare my simulator. Do you want to simulate? Yep. Um, we're just going to do like we do normally, board equals board. In this case, the difference here that you might normally see is we're going to add an ID. An ID here is going to be how you identify this process. So we recommend the process name be something like that will give you unique information about as to what this process is. So for here, given we're uh, changing the process, the data cache and the uh, instruction cache, I'm just going to do process underscore and data cache size underscore instruction cache size. So that's unique for each process, and we will allow me to quickly visualize. Well, but quickly see, given this ID, what process is running. And this will also be what Gem5 uses to name the output directories. So the output directories for each of these is going to be process under blah, blah. And that's where all the uh, output files are going to go. So I'd say it's good to put this down. If this isn't, if the ID isn't specified, it still work. But the way ID system is just going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the order they were added to the added to the the, the, in order of execution, so which is considerably less valuable information. So here, we've done that. And that's all we need to do. We don't run simulator.run, because the multi-sim the, uh, multi package will do that for us. And now, this is the magic part, where we're going to go to the command line. I'm going to go remember to go into the uh, multi-sim module here. That's, uh, that's uh, materials, also using Gem5. Uh, 11 dash multisim. From here, we can run gem5 and we do dash m because it's a module we have to load here. Uh, gem5.utils.multisim. Multisim. And then we just pass in the script that we've made. So multisim. Oops, sorry, I will correct you. Scratch my statement slightly before. Let's CD into uh, 0 02 multiprocessing via multisim first. Then do gem5 m gem5.utils.multisim multisim dash experiment. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Save it first. I have my code space up to automatically save files, so I don't do that very often. Um, and I, I really hope this works, because it worked at home. Yep, that's, see kind of the noisy outputs here. You kind of see this is run twice, right? <laughs> Which is what we want to see. Uh, so there's four, so it's going to do that again, I think. 
if I remember correctly, this takes about 30 seconds or so. While we're while it's happening, I can show you the output directories. Uh, yep, M5 out. You see there's two already done here, the 8 times 8 and the 16 times 8. You see the stats files in there. That's per process. Um, these are obviously still running. We're not going to go, well, I'll just, yep, OK, that's that done. We're moving on to the second two, because there's four of them. Yep, and they're added there, 16 times 16. And I'll see this to the end just to see that satisfaction, to see that being done. So there's one small part at the end, but if you run this, and I suppose the question, well, as I ask myself is, OK, what about if I want to just run one of these processes and not all of them? What do I do? Well, I came up with a solution to that. Um, I'll just wait until this is finished. It should be too long. Great. It's there. Multiprocessing done. We've run four processes of Gen 5 for a single configuration script. But let's say I only want to run one. Well, the first thing I do is instead of doing the dash M, which is our multiprocessing module, just run the script directly, just like you would normally, and then do dash dash list. Now, it gives us the IDs of each process that is created from this script. Let's say I only want to run 8 times 16. Do that and pass in that ID, that ID uh, process dash 8kb dash 6 underscore kb. And if you do this, it will just run that one process from that set of processes. Also another reason 